Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pursuit Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Antonair, and then today's episode is one I'm super excited for. We talked with Anthony Schlegel, Ohio State football legend, and, of course, he's an avid bow hunter. We covered what brought him to Ohio State, some of his funny stories about his time there, his love for bow hunting, and how to balance our busy lives with our outdoor passion. All right, everyone, welcome back in. We are live with Mr. Anthony Schlegel, Buckeye legend. How are we doing today, buddy? Hey, man. I'm doing great, guys. <laughs> Pop the monsters. Pop the monsters. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> um, so with us today, uh, Anthony Schlegel, as, as you heard on the phone, and then obviously the man behind the switches all the time, Mr. Ben Johnson. What's up, guys? Boys, let's get at it. So, Anthony, I know you. I'm a huge Ohio State fan. I think most of our listeners here in the state will probably know who you are. But for those of you who don't know, go ahead. Let's get introduce yourself real fast and kind of talk about who you are and, and um, you know, where you came from. Oh, man. I mean, there's a lot. I, 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 I don't even know where to begin, but just, you know, Anthony Schlegel, I am uh, currently the uh, head strength coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I have no clue. We're, they're hiring some a new head coach, and so I'm down here in Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm the father of three, husband to one, and uh, yeah, I'm all about maximizing people through authentic service, and that's really who I am right there. I love Jesus and my family and maximizing people. Awesome, and then I found a little nugget today. I mean, I felt like I know you just from listening to you on the radio, but I found a little nugget today that interests me. State champion wrestler in the state of Texas, Uh is that true? (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah, man, state champion wrestler in Texas and uh, had a couple of uh, deadlifting records back in the day when I was in high school. And, you know, I went to the Air Force Academy first out of high school. Didn't really get recruited a lot because I wrestled and played football. Uh, and then I ended up transferring to Ohio State for my junior and senior, senior season. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that. It's been a long time. 21 years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Of course, Ohio State has a fantastic program. And, I mean, the Big Ten in Absolutely. general obviously has a fantastic program. And, of course, they're doing great things up there uh, with Tom Ryan and his crew. So I, when I saw that, I had, to, I had to throw that in. I don't know how many people would actually know that. Um, so, obviously, you mentioned transferring from the Air Force Academy, obviously, to Ohio State. You know, what kind of went into that decision? Did you go into the Air Force Academy thinking that you were going to be more of a service member, or did you um, go more, mainly for the football, or how'd that work out? Oh, no, I mean, it was, you know, I wanted to serve my country and, and play football, and that was actually the best, uh, you know, program that I had that recruited me at the time. But I loved everything about it, and it just so happened that, you know, after my sophomore season, I was a team captain, I was – the first underclassman captain of the time at a service academy. Um, but, you know, a change needed to be made. And so I ended up transferring, un- not knowing where I was going to go. And, you know, basically got re-recruited all over again. And I loved the academy football. And when I got recruited to Ohio State, it was a small world because Mark D'Antonio, who was at University of Cincinnati and at Michigan State for a long time, he was actually coached by my defensive coordinator, uh, Coach Bell, when he was at South Carolina, and fun fact, uh, Mark D'Antonio actually started his college career at West Point. So there was a little bit of that connection. And then, um, yeah, so that's kind of how it all came to be. And then when I came to Ohio State on my recruiting visit, I met A.J. Hawk, Bobby Carpenter. I was like, these guys are just like me. Like, this is this is a no-brainer. And then you had, you know, Jim Trestle on top of that, who was very similar to a Fisher to Barry, great man of faith. I was like, this is where, this is where I'm going. So, poop David Copperfield. I transferred to Ohio State, and the rest is history. I mean, best college in the in the state or in the country, right? I mean, there ain't nothing yeah, better absolutely. than that. Let's it's the go. Best. Let's go. No. I'm glad you mentioned Mark D'Antonio too, because a little fun fact for you: he's a Zanesville man, um, mm-hmm. and so we both here, Ben and I, are from Licking County area. So I know him very well. And in fact, uh, I have a family member that went and played uh, for Michigan State under him. So. It's always cool to kind of bring back that that recruit, and that kind of describes why he's so good with the state of Ohio when he was a coach. So, yeah, no doubt. That's um, it's funny because when I was in college, uh, I played with a guy from Alexandria, Ohio. Went to Northridge High School. His name was Alec Messerall. He was a wide receiver, and uh, his family owns a tree farm there, Messerall's Tree Farm, Christmas trees. But that's how I got into bow hunting because when I transferred to Ohio State, 
I mean, I grew up in Texas killing pigs with dogs and a knife my entire life. So I was like, well, you can't use a gun in the state of Ohio because it's only like one week. So you have to use a bow. And that's, that's how I got into archery and, and basically deer hunting here in the state. Well, you got to maximize that potential in that time in the stand, right? I mean, why do something for, <laughs> for only sure. one week when you can do it for three or four months? Exactly. So we got to. It's still going on. It's still yeah, going exactly. On. It's a little too cold for us right now, but yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm a chicken. I got to get back out there. Um, but you, I got to talk about killing pigs with knives. So let's go. Uh, so that was a question we did have for you. Um, you know, let's talk about your, maybe your hunting background. Everyone, we, we know your football story, but what about that hunting background? Where that, let's, uh, let's uh, start there. Well, the hunting, it's funny. Everything that I've ever done in my life all comes from the weight room, uh, in, in some type of respect, but I was training at a gym called Metroflex gym out of Arlington, Texas. And it's like home to a time, Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman, Branch Warren, who's won the Arnold a number of times, Johnny Jackson, like all these big time bodybuilders. And I was 12 years old and I walked into this gym and it was just loud, you know, rap and rock, you know, cuss words just going all over the place. Monster dudes throwing monster weight around. I was like, this place is for me. And my dad's like, are you serious? This is where you want to train? I was like, yes, I want to train here. So I started training there. Well, then when I was about 15 years old, the owner started training me and he was a huge hog hunter. I'm, uh, you know, like he would give me books about Fred Bear and all these other like old West timey, you know, guys that hunted with dogs and, and guns. And anyways, so he had hog dogs on the back of the gym. So like outside the gym, he had like a little area where he had his hog dogs. And so he's training me and kind of to, you know, mitigate the cost. Like I would clean up the gym and then it got, hey, man, you want to you want to go hog hunting? You know, I'm like, absolutely, B, I want to go hog. And his name's Brian Dobson, by the way. And he still hunts pigs. Like, he's one of my best friends. But anyways, so I started taking care of the dogs. Then he started taking me out. So, I mean, this is this is how far our world has come because I didn't have a cell phone or anything like that. But I would drive up to the gym, and I had a, you know, real fresh old Camaro that I had bought uh, mowing yards, and I would drive up there from DeSoto and – I'd put the dogs and put the collars on them and put them in his truck. And then when he got done with his day, we would, you know, train people. We would drive like two hours to East Texas and dump the dogs at night. Cause it was hot. So hot during the day, you had to hunt them at night. And I'm, like, I'm just going along with this. Right. So it's hot shirts are off. I'm wearing a pair of blue jeans and boots and we're just hunting pigs, man. Like these dogs are going out and, and, and there's different types of dogs. There's open trail dogs, there's closed mouth dogs. And um, so he was running an open mouth dog at the time who would bark on trail and then they would get so far away that we couldn't, couldn't hear him. So he'd break out this like, you know, radio signal tracking system and he would just follow it around and it would beep and the faster it beep, like that was the direction and we just start walking. And all you had was a headlight, you know, like a cheap, like $20 headlight you bought from Home Depot or something. And we would go out there and then all of a sudden they would be on pigs and, you know, you let the catch dog go and you run in there and you flip it over and you take out a K bar and you just, and you stab them. There you go. Right behind the shoulder blade and it's oh, game over. And then we would, the dogs would roll out onto the next and we would do that all night. And then we'd drive two hours back to the gym and I, we'd already gutted it and stuff. And we never left anything. Like if, if it was three miles away from the truck, you just drug it back to the truck. It didn't matter. That was kind of part of our GPP general physical preparedness that you would do from training. And we would take it back and then you get to the gym and we'd hang it up on this uh, old like kind of like pull up bar that we did hanging abs on. And we'd get clips from, you know, different pieces of like cable equipment and we would just hang the pigs there and skin them. And then I would go home with like a, a back strap and that was it. And I'd be covered in blood, uh, <laughs> like scra just scratched. I mean, like blood everywhere, scratched up from running through briars and stuff, just bleeding all over my body. My parents were like, what is going on? I was like, this is this is what we do, and so that's that was always how my passion started for hunting, you know. And then it grew into where when I was in the NFL, like I had my own hunting dogs, and we would do homeless outreaches in Fort Worth, and which was a great excuse when I was married. Hey, we got this homeless outreach going on uh, on Saturday. I'm going to be gone for the next two days because I'm going to go kill as many pigs 
as I possibly can. And then I'd go up to Lake Tawakini, and we'd run drug lines, we'd catch a bunch of blue cat, and then we'd feed like 500 people. It was that's, awesome. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's how it started. And now look at you. Now look at me. You know, and then my deer hunt really happened. My father-in-law was a big deer hunter in Texas. It's completely different. Like you're hunting over feeders. You know, this is probably like south central Texas. And I remember we were in the Alamo Bowl. This is 2004. And so we had some time off. So I drove up with him to his deer lease and shot, shot my, like that was my first time ever deer hunting. And so he gave me like a, I think it was a shoot. I, you know, I was shooting his 270. And it was like, I had no clue about like scopes or anything. I just remember like looking at this deer through the scope. It was like, oh yeah. And he told me like what I could shoot, what I couldn't shoot. And I was like, this is a monster, you know? And so I shot this buck and then he told me, he's like, just wait. Did you see it go down? I was like, no. He's like, just wait a little bit. Then you get down. And so I, I went down and started tracking it. Couldn't really find it. Um, knew about tracking, but not, not really well and end up finding it and it's just like ground shrinkage to the max. I thought I had this monster buck and it was probably, <laughs> probably a two year old scrub buck, scrub buck from South Central Texas. But all in all, it was all good. Though. Ground, the ground shrinkage is a real deal. Yeah. It's a real yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah. It's facts. Did you do a lot of hunting when you were at Ohio state? Yeah. So there, I mean, there's a lot of funny stories there. So that's where I got into bull hunting and, um, you know, so I go over to the mess rolls and my buddy Tommy, uh, Frank's, who's a, um, uh, he's a sheriff out there in Lincoln County. Anyways, I'd go out and, and hunt with them and get in the tree stand and, um, shoot a doe. You know, I just remember one time I, I kind of stopped hunting during the season. I almost broke my leg because on a tree farm, there's all these holes where they dig up, you know, trees for landscaping or whatever. And there's all the CRP around. And I shot a doe and I was tracking it and I fell into one of these things uh, on the Friday before a game. Cause I would go out oh. you know, on Fridays, like we, we had practice and, and you'd be done or we had practice in the afternoon, but I had no class on Friday. So I would go hunt Friday mornings and I that almost broke my leg. And um, anyways, got the deer, went back. We we're doing like a little arm pump with Bobby and AJ and they're like, you never kill it. I was like, I just shot a doe today. Like, what are you talking about? And they just kept razzing me about it. So then I ended up just taking my bow out and I shot a squirrel <laughs> out there in the parking lot of the Woody Hayes. No, that's I stuck awesome. That in Bobby's, st- stuck that in Bobby's locker. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I can't ever take anything down. But just time, just out there ripping arrows in the middle of the parking lot at the Woody. Uh, times have changed a little bit, but uh, just a little bit. Yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. I mean, I, you know, I love Ohio. And I love, I just love the woods. I love everything about like Ohio and deer hunting and everything that goes into it. So that's kind of, that's where my passion for bow hunting really came. Matter of fact, I got my, my first two bows I got from Vance out there in uh, like Buckeye Lake area. Yeah, Hebron. Hebron? Yep. Yeah, Hebron. Yep. Yeah, the Hebron one. The first bow I, I bought was a, let's see, it was a Hoyt Ultra Mag. And my buddy Tommy, he's a Hoyt guy through and through, so I bought a Hoyt Ultra Mag. And then when I graduated, I switched because I got, you know, I got drafted in the NFL, so I had a little pocket change, so I got a Hoyt Tricon, but it was an 80 pounder. It was awesome. That's fantastic. Uh, and, yeah, and then in the league, I switched to a Matthews. And then, and then when I had to go buy an, a bow myself, then I went and switched to the Hoyt uh, Axis Ultra. And it's an eighty pounder. It's slinging meat missiles like a maniac. I mean, meat missiles. I was I hoping, like a five hundred meat missiles, baby. I was hoping you were going to say <laughs> meat missiles. I was working all day just for you to say the word meat missile. Uh, are you still shooting Hoyt or Matthews or what are you shooting right now? I mean, you know, I, I think that's the one thing. Like, there's so many really good bows out there. The number one thing is, like, I I, I was thinking about getting the. The VXT, is that what it's called for Matthews? V3X. Yeah, v, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. V3X. And, like, you know, it's all about use. So like, my draw length's like, 29. And the shorter axis-to-axis bows, like, I like to be – I'm a big routine guy, just like in sports. Like, that's how I kind of equate bow hunting. Like, you have your setup, right? If it's 
this cold outside, this is the hunting gear I wear. If it's this cold, this is what I wear. You know, hey, here's how I like to have my binoculars, my rangefinder on me. You know, what do I put in my bag and et cetera, et cetera. Well, the same routine every time. Like, that's how you get good at archery. It's the same routine over and over again because then you know why you miss, especially if you like what I like to do, which is like I just enjoy shooting long range. So all the fundamentals that you have have to be at a higher level if you want to go shoot 100 yards, you know, plus. So I just like that routine. I, I found me personally the shorter axle to axle bows. I wasn't able to get that good anchor and like be able to put my nose on the string and just be level. It had to hover a little bit. So I went with a, a longer axle to axle bow. And that's why I went with the Hoyt. But I mean, there's so many good ones out there. Uh, it's really the every, like I just tell everybody you need to go, you know, go to advances and go shoot every single one. And whatever one you feel the most confident in, like that's the one that you need to get. It's just like golf clubs. Like they're a dime or dozen. They all got different stuff, whether you're tailor made or ping or, but just go find the one that is the best for you. Like I'm not a good golfer. I use pings. They're really forgiving. So if you don't get to shoot all the time, go find you the most forgiving bow that fits your setup. If you're somebody that is fanatical about it and you've been doing it for a long time, then you might get a completely different setup because you don't care about certain things. You care about X, Y, and Z, you know, and it's, and it's not about the weight. Like, why can I pull back 80 pounds? Yeah, I can deadlift 650 pounds. Like I, I you know, I don't know a lot of guys that can do a lot of the back work that I do, you know, that are out there. So it's like, you might, yeah, you might need to shoot, 60 pounds or 55. Ted Nugent shows that all the time. It's not about how, how much poundage you got. It's about arrow placement exactly. and knowing what those ranges are for you to make an ethical kill. So, you know, so go make that your setup and then be all in on it. That's how you're going to be a successful bow hunter. And the cool thing is, is that having the farm there, I became the dad that taught all the kids how to, how to hunt, how to get in a deer stand, and come out to the farm and shoot bows and get their sights ready. And then all of a sudden it's like my son and a couple of buddies and they're walking to the deer, you know, and then you got the trail camp picks and they're looking at the picks and where I want to go set up. I'm like, yes, get you that's what up. it is. Like, that's how, that's how you bring up the next generation. You get it fun, right? Uh, yeah. Make it fun. And so, and they're into it, you know, but that, that's, that's what it's about to me. Every time that we go to the store, you know, and do whatever promotional pictures or whatever promotional work or video that we're doing for the store and for, you know, social media and all that stuff. Every time I see a kid in there, I damn near get choked up like every single time. Cause we, we know what we do here and then what, you know, what changes we're making, you know, the people's family traditions, you know, and that's just right. to, to me, that's exactly what it's about. There's nothing else to me that it can be about whether it's hunting, fishing, shooting, doesn't matter. It's, you know, how do you grow this? Right. You get it to your family and you pass that down to generations. Yep. And you do it, you do it like you have a plan, you know, uh, in doing so just like my kids when even shooting guns or, you know, firearms or bow hunting or fishing. Cause I, I never grew up in that regard. My dad was a high school football coach. So I learned a lot of those things from people, you know, outside of my family. I mean, deer hunting, uh, is a passion of my father-in-law's, uh, you know, hog hunting was a fat passion of my, my trainer, but they were able to then pass it on to me and, and really talk about it. Like that, that's some of the funnest things that I've ever experienced are, like, you know, with my father-in-law in the deer woods. And it's not going out there and, like, hey, we're, yeah, we're going after, you know, a Ohio big buck. It really doesn't even matter. Like I'll take a seven point mature deer. Like that's a trophy to me. Oh, 100%. You know, it's not, it's not about, but you like the pro it's to me, it's all about the process. And unless you teach kids about that process, and again, I'm, I wish I knew a lot about food plots. I wish I knew a lot about other things where there's things that I do know. And so if you can then pass on to them and get them excited about it and having success and teaching them a success is not going out every single time and shooting a deer. Success to me is the fact that you had an opportunity to even go out into the woods to be able to sit there and watch the world wake up or watch the sun go down and just be quiet with yourself and your thoughts and, and be able to like, what are you watching for? Like, how did, what's the plan of attack? You know, where's the wind, you know, how are you getting to and from your, your tree stand without being detected? All those different things go into it. And that's part of the excitement 
in the experience of it in and of itself. Oh, yeah. And that was one thing that I wanted to, to kind of bring up with you, too, because obviously you're a high energy guy. I mean, you're known to be the high energy guy, you know, cranking up the monsters. Um, I believe I heard you say one time on the radio that like going out there kind of helps almost uh, zen you, you know, kind of helps balance out that time, you know, when you're busy, busy, busy day, 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 and you're crushing stuff and you're smashing workouts and then you you get out there and you can kind of connect. And I thought it, it was funny because I remember when I heard you say that at the time, I think some of the co-hosts on the on the radio show that you're on mentioned that it was kind of a surprise to them. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like you, I, there, I'll put it this way. Like there's certain things that in life you got to be committed to. That was probably like the biggest lesson I learned when I was getting my MBA while I was coaching at Ohio State. Um, you know, what are you committed to? What are you involved in? And you have to know what those are. And as I got out and I was, and I'll use it as my, my time. Cause I didn't hunt a lot when I was coaching because I was committed to, you know, my faith, my family and coaching the crap out of the Buckeyes. And there wasn't a lot of time for hunting. Right. But I made, I made the commitment to those areas. And then when I got out and I started my own business and I was doing the radio, it was faith family and the difference, the radio, and then, it was hunting and giving, giving back in that capacity. And so that, like, those were my five things. Like, I don't think you can do more than five because you become involved in a bunch of different things and you become a shadow of your elite self if I'm doing 10 different things. So for me, that's kind of my reset. But if that's my reset, then I don't go play golf. I don't go do, I don't go, I don't go out, you know, and, and hang out with the boys. Like, I just, I just don't do those things. Like I know, for me, that enjoyment is hunting. And then better yet, how do you make that enjoyment something that you can do as the family with the family that they enjoy? So then, it, then they're experiencing it with you. And so that like most, some of my most peaceful times are just riding the tractor, mowing trails or, you know, hanging tree stands and getting up there. And like, this is a job well done. I remember, you know, I don't, it might've been two years ago, like I built a road on the north ridge of my property with a bull i rented a bulldozer my father-in-law and i did for a week it was so fun i mean we oh, just I bet. took down everything you know <laughs> and we, we reclaimed we reclaimed some of the the overhanging growth that was you know on some of our crop fields we were able to like get some of that back by doing it we, we created a trail so we could access certain parts of the property like that was super fun and you remember that, and then you know your family's there. I'm like, I'm cutting stuff up, and we're burning it, and they're they're experiencing. Yeah, it's a hard work, but we also grilled out. And all their friends were down there, and they were fishing while we were doing things, and then they would come back together. Like that's what they remember. So, but yeah, that, that's that's my time. That's how I I recover. And all that work, and all that work that you're doing in the off season. I mean, as you know, and as we know, like that, it only is tenfold come fall. You know, what I mean, as much as you want to put into it, whether that's shooting your bow and practicing and, and slinging, you know, thousands of rounds during the summer, or you know, hanging them stands or cutting those branches down that could be a bad shot. Uh, every little bit of work that you can put in in the off season, honestly, it, it drastically changes the outcome for the fall for sure. Absolutely, and that's why you got to, you know, hunting is one of those things where you get to pick and choose who you do it with, and you want to be able to do it with great company. Like, I mean, in Ohio, I get to hunt with my father-in-law and a buddy of mine named Ben Wilson. Ben's awesome because he's he's the uh, PE teacher at uh, Bluffview Elementary School, but he also does their archery program. Yeah, for NASA. And, and, yeah, and, and like, phenomenal. Is giving, like, that's how my kids got started, because he had that program, and they, they were shooting the little Genesis. And yep. my oldest was like, yeah, I want a real bow. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get you a real bow. But, like, that's what gets him into it. And, and then, like, even now, like, he'll go down and take care of the farm when I'm not there. But when I got to come back after our season, like, it was perfect. I was like, I got to just go put my gear on and go out to a stand and everything was ready to go. Great. Thank you so much for that because I was able to enjoy it. All right, everyone. We hope you're enjoying the conversation so far, but we need to take a quick break to talk about our state-of-the-art indoor shooting range at our flagship location in Obetz. It features 24 lanes, the Inveris training system, and two large training classrooms. Check out vanceoutdoors.com slash range for available rentals, prices, and a list of all of our upcoming classes and events. Again, that's Vance, V-A-N-C-E, outdoors.com slash range. 
Now let's go ahead and jump back into the conversation. Let's get into I, – I got. I need some funny stories here because there's a certain national championship winning quarterback that I believe that you got into archery. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Let's talk about getting Cardell into shooting. But he has to have like a 35-inch draw or something, doesn't he? I mean, he it's seems so like he's got yeah. super long arms. So so Cardell is like, yeah, I want to get into hunting. So and, and Cardell is awesome, man. He's open to everything. Like He loves firearms. He loves archery. Um, I mean, they're, they're surprisingly enough, like just off the top, like um, Jake Ballard loves archery. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And, and firearms, like these guys. I mean, Buckeyes Midwest love to be out, but Cardell is unique. One, he's a he's a national champion quarterback. He's six five. You know, this big guy. So anyway, so we're gonna go hunt at the farm. He doesn't have any type of hunting gear, so I take him down to Obed's. So I'm like, hey, listen, you're gonna get some hunting gear. Here's what you need um, to buy. So I, I tried to get it for him before. I'm like, no, you got to go try this stuff on because you're just – He's a, he's a large, and, large man. Yeah, I was like, you can't – you know, you, you could fit into some of my stuff, but, like, it's not going to help you when you pull this book back and I want you to have success. Anyways, we went out there and got a bunch of gear. So the best part of the story is I take him on this spot where I'm like, listen, you can take whatever you want, Cardell. Like, if you if, if it's a buck, like, I would like for you to shoot a mature buck. It's the first time you've ever been out in the woods. I'm not going to – you know, be upset if you did something, you know, that I wouldn't do. But I know there's a bunch of dough coming in at this time. You never know what you're going to see. Have at it. But the best part of it was him getting into a hang-on tree stand. <laughs> so just picture yourself like Cardell Jones, 6'5", 240, 50 pounds, whatever, and size 14 boot because we bought boots there and stuff. So he's climbing up this, and, I, you know, he's, he's lanyard in. And I'm, I'm, t- I'm trying to teach him as he goes up, like, how to do this. You know, you didn't get, like, a trial. Like, we just went out there and started hunting. I'm like, all right, you're going to go sit in this tree stand. So he gets up there, and he's shimming up there, and he's, like, hugging this tree as, as tight as he can. Then he gets, puts a foot in, and it's, like, literally just, like, hugging this tree as he turns around, you know, and then sits down, and then I help him ho- ho- hoist his bow up. And, and he ended up shooting, like, I mean, this smallest deer I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it wasn't but but it was it was awesome man. you know I, I was trying to i was like hey man we got to process this thing man let's do this he's like, ah you know i don't know but i was like, but you took it like this is what you gotta do like this is the next process he's like oh she's like she got this man i just watched you know you show me you educate me on how you do this and boom i did my deal through the back of the truck and then went up and took the tenderloins out and threw him on the grill and it was fantastic that's but, fantastic yeah Card- Card- cardell's awesome i mean here here's a conversation i mean for those i mean i don't know who doesn't know who cardell De- jones is but for those of you who may not this is the guy that's been to the pinnacle of college sports in a situation that obviously no one expected that year and here he is i can see him now climbing four- size 14 shoes climbing up on a little hang on hawk stand or whatever have you that, that's no, awesome. you know you know the big game baby i mean i go after the cheap those things last big game anyway, there you so go you know, but, uh, big, yeah, game. big game uh big game xl and then the 20 foot quick sticks here you go boom right to strap those around and you're in you know it is a great setup. that's one of my best stands so i mean at least i was right i put them in one of my best best spots that's fantastic well another thing i mean we, we got to talk about the cincinnati game what year was that that was the uh, 14. Was it yeah, 14? 14? That was the 14. I see. I get the Cincinnati games confused a little bit. So the body slam heard around the world, I guess. Uh, I even looked today, <laughs> which I don't know if you know this. Maybe you did. Being a Texas guy, the the Stone Cold Steve Austin even threw a little tweet at you. Did you Did you know that? I did. I remember that back in the day. I don't remember what it, it said. But I got yeah. it pulled up because I knew that we. Uh, I thought it was funny. It says, "Props to OSU strength coach Anthony Schlegel." That tackle was worth five Buckeye helmet stickers in the game ball. Let's go. <laughs> it's funny. Like I had, no, I didn't have Twitter at the time. There was no Twitter for me. And I was like, I'm, I'm still anti-social media, but I'm on it because I was doing radio. But my, and my guys after that happened were like, you got to get on Twitter. So I got on Twitter like a year later. But that being said, yeah, that, that whole story was funny because I had the worst job in all of college athletics, which is the strength coach that's responsible for – special team substitution. That's the worst job because you're not in the meetings. You're trying to make sure that all your guys are on the field. Whenever there's a guy missing, just know that that's a strength coach that's supposed to help that, even though it's not his job. Like, he just helps. But he's the one that gets his face melted off of by the head coach if everybody's not out there. So, And Urban's definitely melting your face uh, off for sure. 
Oh yeah, for sure. And so I'm just out there. So I'm, I, I just remember it vividly because it was second down. I had three guys on punt. We're on offense. I had three guys on punt that were on offense and they happened to be on the field. So I'm like, okay, I know where those guys are. And all the other, you know, eight guys, like they're defensive players. So I'll get them when I got to get them on third down. But those two guys, I just want to make sure I knew where they were. Anyways, and all of a sudden I started looking and I saw a person. I had no clue what they were doing, what, what was going on. And anyway, so he started coming closer. And at the time, Nicky Marotti, the head straight coach for Ohio State football, who's an absolute stud, was standing, happened to be standing right next to me. And I look at him, and he looks at me. I'm still holding my depth chart in my hand, and this person just keeps coming closer. And I look back at him. Now, Mickey Marotti, Western PA guy, toughest nails, um, straight coach forever. I mean, it, it is, you just look at him, and you're like, that's a straight coach. Anyways, I swear that he gave me the eyebrows, you know, kind of like the raised eyebrows yeah. and the cocking of the head, like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and that's, that's, that's all I needed. And then I flipped the switch, boom, wrestling instincts and football instincts kicked in. Speed to power, right? Shoulders over knees, knees over toes. The guy ran into me. He ran into me, right? Not me running into him. And then it just turned into a lateral drop wrestling move. And then I escorted him off the field and went about my business. Now, that's where the story gets interesting because I just kept doing my job, not knowing anything. Um, side nugget. There was a kid that I trained that I had the hardest time training, but after that happened, like he was my guy from then on. It was funny. <laughs> um, but anyways, so I go about my business and I'm leaving the stadium. And I'm walking back to my truck at the Woody, and my wife calls me. She's like, "What did you do?" Because she didn't. She wasn't at the games. You uh -oh. know, she wasn't at the games because I was I was getting my MBA, going to night school. Like that was the only time I got to like really see them. So she stayed at home so she could she could be there when I got there. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, did you do something? Did you slam somebody? I was like, no, a guy, a guy ran on the field and I, I took care of it. You know, not a big deal. Well, little did I know what it was going to do. And then on that Monday, I had to go to my MBA class and I got like this standing ovation. And they were talking and somebody, somebody mentioned to me like about something about like, liability insurance and I just I got this like eerie feeling like maybe I did something wrong I don't know I have no clue so I texted my wife like hey why don't you go look up our, our insurance policy and make sure we still have that umbrella insurance policy that I had when I was playing in the NFL you know to cover things in case in case I got sued or something like that so she ends up calling our insurance provider and they're and told it they told it like Mrs. Schlegel are you talking about your husband's on the field activities they totally knew what was going on. So oh, they already, yeah, they already knew. My insurance, my my insurance people, that yes, and I was covered. I had an umbrella policy, so it was all good. But yeah, it was. I end up. Uh, I got Hit City that week. I got a Hit City T-shirt from Coach Meyer, and uh, Gene wrote me a nice letter. You know, basically, don't ever do that again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I still got that. I still got that somewhere. But yeah, it's you know that's what happens. Don't trespass at Ohio Stadium. That's it. Lesson learned. Exactly, exactly. The hit heard around the world. Um, so let's get into a little bit, like what what you got, what do you have going on? Uh, what what's your schedule now? Obviously, you're in the, you guys are in the off season. Um, you get when you're in Florida, are you getting into any type. I mean, obviously, there's hog opportunities down there. There's other opportunities. I mean, you probably don't have too much time with it being in the season. But um, are you making time to to get out, fish, or anything like that down there? Yeah, fishing will be something. Um that I'll be able to do. Like I was able to come back to Ohio uh, and, and get on the stand for a couple of days. Uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago when the season was over. So I was able to enjoy that for a little bit and do some work around the farm. But as part of that committed involvement, like when I, when I decided to get back in coaching, I knew that deer hunting and hunting in general was going to be something that had to go to the side. You know, it's something I, I don't get to do all the time. Because the family is the most important. And then when you have a, a 15, a 14, and a 9-year-old, they're into a bunch of different things. And my wife and the season in the NFL is so long. I mean, we started, let's see, we started July 20th was rookies reported and the quarterbacks reported. And we started camp on July 27th. 
and basically from July 27th until January 10th, I had two days off during that entire span. So I remember Bobby giving you some yeah, hard time on the radio not too long ago about all that too, right? Yeah. So it's like I mean, that, but that's that's how long the season is, and it's just you know though, you, you understand that when you decide to get in there, like that's what you're committed to. So other things go to the side, but now once you have the off season, yeah, you'll be able to explore Florida a little bit, and especially where we are in Jacksonville, there's a lot of really good inshore opportunities and fishing. And you know, that's the thing, you don't need a lot. You know, like I have a buddy, Craig Fade, his brother is down there and is down here in Jacksonville. He's a sheriff. He has I went out fishing with him one time and he had a uh, he had like a little fourteen foot John boat. We were in these back channels inshore fishing. And it was super fun. Like that's it. We had a trolling motor and a fourteen foot John boat, and we just went out there and started fishing. That's Ben's language. That's man. all you need. Yep, that's Ben's love language. He's sounds a like a good time to me. He's a fishing man. He loves it. Yeah, that. yeah, it's awesome. My oldest son absolutely loves to fish. You know, so that's that's what you do. You find those things that they love to do, and you get out there and you do it, and you enjoy it as a family. Do you have any advice for all the listeners about balancing a busy schedule and? Uh trying to make time to be in the in the woods or, you know, going out fishing or doing whatever they enjoy out in the outdoors? Yeah, I think I think the number one thing is find out. I think the first thing is, like, you got to know who you are. Like I said at the very beginning, Anthony Schlegel, my, my purpose in life is to maximize people through authentic service. So that's that's what I do, and I have my core values of being authentic service, excellence, and integrity, and that that's me. So everything that I do has to fall under that for me to be able to go do it. So that's one. So two is those things that you're committed to. What are they? And if the outdoors are one of them, like I train, you know, and I have the outdoors. So like those are my two my two things that I enjoy doing for myself. And if that's the case, then all other things have to be set aside if that's what you want to do. You know, if you want to have a piece of property, you know, and cultivate it, then guess what? You're probably that's time away from your family. Well, you got to know that I'm enjoying this. I'm making a, a choice to go do this, so I'm not going to go do other things. I think that's where people fall into a trap of they try to do too many things. They have too many hobbies, right? No, focus on the things that you're really passionate about. And if archery, like for me, archery and hunting they're the same. Um, so, like, if I'm really passionate about it, then those are the things that I'm going to do. Having this job, I don't do that very often. But I also understood that when I made the choice to do this occupation, I was going to give up certain things. So I think it's really knowing who you are and what you're about and what you want to do and then just saying, okay, this is what I'm going to go do. And that's where I'm going to give up my time because there's only a finite amount of time. Sure, for sure, for sure. You know, yep. and so so if being, being a great husband – it's part of that. Well, guess what? There's going to be some time where you don't get to go do certain things. Cause you got to go on a date. You got to go do chores around the house. You got to, I mean, that's your life partner. So that's what we're doing. If it's taking the kids to their, their ball games and working on their crafts, you know, then that's, that's time. Right. But if there's hunting, what am I going to a lot for that? Okay. I'm going to do this. Well, that means I don't go to that game or I don't watch that game or I don't do this. And you're not going to feel remorse about it or that you, you know, have FOMO. Because, no, this is what I'm passionate about doing, and this is what I love to do, so I'm going to go do it. Just one more to wrap it up, man. I know, obviously, you, you've said it several times a day. Just one more time I want you to hit. I, obviously, family is incredibly important to you. Talk about the family and just the, the, the blessing that it is for them to, you know, what kind of partner do you have to have, and how thankful are you, you know, for your family to give you the time to be able to do the passions that you, you care about so much? Oh, man, let me tell you something. I mean, that's, besides my faith, that's the number one thing, and, you know, even I, I give everybody like a little lesson here. I mean, you know, we went through a lot. There's a lot of trials and tribulations that occurred uh, in Jacksonville this year, but it's really what's your mindset as you go through it. And I kept going back to James 1 where it talks about that we'll face trials and tribulations of many kinds, but consider it all joy, right? Consider it all joy as you face trials and tribulations. And that's really one thing I had to do, and that was, you know, where is the gratitude for for what I'm going through and the things that come out of that. And then you step back and you're able to compartmentalize uh, and glorify and be grateful for those things. Like my kids are doing fantastic. My relationship with the Lord is great. My relationship with my wife has never been better 
uh, you know, my kids are, are, are thriving when you, you know, they're doing great. So like, there's so many things to be grateful for the impact that I have on these guys here and the impact that they have on, on me, the ability for some of them to have their, their best years, even though we didn't have a, the great season that we wanted. Like those are all things that you have to consider it all joy and be grateful for. So that's just kind of how, you know, in the midst of that, you got to make sure that your mindset is right and your perspective on the situation is is accurate. Because if not, like you'll be just bogged down with the weight of everything, right? It just gives you a better outlook as to how to approach uh, how to approach it day in and day out. Fantastic way to view that, man. Um, you couldn't have said it any better. Sir, it's been fun. I can't believe it. We've already talked for 45 minutes. Um, I knew it wasn't going to take much to get you talking. Um, real fast, where can people find you if they want to get you on social media? Oh, yeah. I mean, at Schlegelvelli, that's the Twitter handle, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, the old Twitter machine. Um, and then uh, I think just, I don't know, Anthony Schlegel, maybe the original. I don't, I don't even know what my handles are on Instagram. No, you're good. We'll, <laughs> well, we got it. We'll put it. I'm going to give you a chance to, to push that. We'll, we have it. We'll put it in the show notes for those that are listening. Sir, I can't tell you. It's, it's been an honor talking to you. Obviously, you know, I've been a Buckeye fan my whole life. Uh, you know, I, it was exciting when I when you wanted to reach out. And, you know, we reached out and got this hooked up. I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your day. I know you're, you know, you're a busy guy. So, again, thank you for, for coming on and giving us some life lessons. You know, if you're in Ohio, let's, you know, Obets has an archery range behind it. We, ben and I love shooting bows, man. We'd be happy to go shoot some bows with you. So, Absolutely. That's I appreciate everything that uh, Vance Outdoors is doing to expand hunting and fishing in central Ohio. You guys are great people, and I appreciate the time. All right, brother. Take care. Enjoy that Florida weather. All right, man. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Enjoy, Ben. See you guys later. All right, everyone, that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Anthony Schlegel. He's a high-energy guy and one I was really excited to get on as a lifelong Buckeye fan. Please leave us a rating below if you enjoyed what you heard today. It's only going to help us grow the channel and provide you some new content. Again, thank you for listening, and as always, enjoy the pursuit.